Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows. You know, a few years ago, more than a few years ago, I built this out of perf board and a CMOS chip and some jacks and a couple of little controls here that you could move. This is a small device that goes in the Eurorack system where when you send a trigger input to it, it powers up the chip, which then sort of squelches to life and makes a funny noise, which you can manipulate with these controls. And then when the trigger signal is over, the chip, the power goes away and the whole thing ceases. It's this weird little glitchy sort of thing that I built in purpose of seeing whether it was something that you could do. And I built this and it makes a sort of squelch noise when a trigger signal hits it. It also will make a noise if other signals other than trigger signals hit it. And the sound that it made wasn't exciting enough for me to keep using it. But I made this a bunch of years ago. And a company called uh, Neutral Labs has just made a thing called Scrooge where you can get a DIY kit. And it's five things just like this thing that I built in a module with a weird sequencer attached to it. And you can fire off all five of them or any selection of them for strange dub steppy noises is the best way I would describe it. So I got one and when I finish building it, I'll show you how it works. Until then, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows Seriously 3. Now the idea of Seriously, as you can see here, is it's a stereo widener. You got center, space, level, Q. I've got a new control here, non-lin, and it has a dry wet. So what you can do is fool with the apparent width of the thing, like this, narrow to wider and wider until it gets kind of insane. I'm gonna put it back to that. I have this reverb going because it's uh, Galactic 3, a recent reverb where it's doing the sound that I want, but it's capable of making very wide reverb sounds. So what's this sound like without Seriously 3? Well, it sounds kind of like this. You'll notice that there's a whole bunch of energy in there that is no longer there. And that's because Seriously 2 and Seriously 3 enhance uh, side energy and do things with it, including throwing on a bunch of funny neural filters, which try to enhance the sound of, you know, apparent, it tries to model your ears kind of, it's based off of an old Howard Hughes invention, believe it or not. Without seriously. And now I'm going to turn on seriously two. And you can hear the changes in texture there. But the interesting part is what Seriously 3 brings, and this might not set your world on fire, but it might just be something that Seriously fans would enjoy. I've got that non-lin feature that I ended up being able to apply to biquad filters in all of the filters in Seriously 3. So what that means is all of the narrow little bandpass filters, these resonant filters that create sounds that are supposed to sound like spatial audio around your ears, are not simply mathematical DOS style um, narrow band biquad filters anymore. They now have that sort of analogification thing, which dirties them up a little bit 
And I found that that had more of an effect on narrow boosts. And of course, these are very tight boosts. The Q factor of these can be quite high. It's certainly, that's not a literal representation of the Q factor. I think it's much higher than that. It's not 0 0.6. It's something like 5 or so at this stage. So if you hear what it sounds like for one and then the other, here's seriously two. And if you have non-lin all the way down, seriously three should sound the same. There's two. There's three. Same settings, same sound. And then you can do this. And there's this interesting quality where the purely biquad version of it is kind of static. But throwing non-lin in makes it more interesting. More stuff starts happening spatially, kind of like this. Here is the static one. You can turn it back off. But when we turn it on, all those narrow boosts start acting a little weird and sketchy. And we can fool with the cue as well. We can make them narrower. Or we could make them wider. So the idea with Seriously 3 is to try to bring this weird stereo widening thing. It is based off of the Hughes SRS and uses some idea similar to that. It was, it was made for a musician I really like who asked for a software version of it. First try I did, I completely failed to make it exactly like what he wanted. Second, if I remember correctly, he was okay with it, although it still didn't perfectly match it. Here's hoping this is along those lines still. And the idea is to be able to have that class of processing, this stereo widenification with funny boosts here, with funny boosts in the high frequencies to model the sound of sound wrapping around your ears and be able to enhance those filters that are a significant part of it. It's not simply a uh, mid-side boost cut thing, although uh, the original Seriously is much more just the filters. So Seriously 2, what you saw here, is that plus a lot of exaggerated mid-side processing. And then Seriously 3 is all of that plus enhancements to the filters. I hope this works out for people. I'm working on a bunch of things. It's not simply a matter of the, uh, you've, you've probably seen people on the internet talking about this Scrooge thing. What with me having an interest in dubstep and these strange wonky growly noises that are synthesizers only not and it seemed to me that that would be a real fun thing to play with. And I have a module in there that can do breakbeats, uh, generative breakbeats. So essentially I'm looking at a generative DNB slash dubstep monstrosity. And if I'm able to do that, maybe I'll even get an album out of it. Because it's kind of my jam. I like noises like that. And it was fun making this, and the kind that I got of this particular device I've been talking about is actually the kit. So I'm going to be soldering that together. I've also been working on uh, Console X quite a bit. The most recent thing, after getting the control surface, 
and color coding all the control surface knobs so I can see what they're doing because the when I got the control surface um, the way it came was with these beautiful black knobs that you couldn't see where they were pointing so I used electrical tape and basically fixed that but um, beyond that I have now got a Reaper script for being able to set the faders and I can get out of the way a little bit Again, faders, I've got it so that I can color code stuff in Reaper to say this red fader and everything in console that uses the red track color will have its fader control snapped to this fader. Likewise for all the other ones. So it's this essentially 11 colors, including black, which is you haven't assigned a color. 11 colors that could handle any size of mix or just freely mess with whatever it is I choose to do in mix. And I am following that up by getting into my little cards and things. Here. Here's more. You might remember that I had little cards for coming up with interesting arrangements and making it sort of gamified. Well, now I have more of those cards, but they are about key signatures and related key signatures and what chords you can play in those key signatures written right down on there. The colors, because I like colors, are um, if the colors are related, then they're closely related keys. If the colors are completely off, they are unrelated keys. And this might look like a fairly thick sheaf of cards, but like those other ones, they are double-sided because the other side is um, the opposite of the circle of fifths, essentially. It's like if you're working with this and that doesn't suit you, you could flip it and instead work with the opposite of the circle of fifths, the farthest removed key signature that you could have, which also changes from major to minor, except for it's not just major or minor. I have added Dorian Lydian Oh, come on. Phrygian and Mixolydian and written them all out carefully so that they represent where you play those chords, the basic major and minor of those chords, all of the related chords that you can go to in that key signature, or if you have similar ones, then related key signatures. That's actually, I think, exactly the same key signature. And uh, I'm going to see what I can do with that stuff as well. Also, I have some tempo things. Anybody who follows me enough knows that I have been working on uh, things like tempo charts and stuff for a really long time. And those eventually come to fruition and become something. So regarding the uh, console X, I've got little modules like this also written on cards. This says comp threshold ratio attack release. These are base and it's color coded to the uh, brown color you'd expect in an SSL or low mid, the blue color you'd expect in an SSL and it's the boost and cut, frequency and width. And the idea with this is when I get all of these, which I have, all of these written on the little cards, it helps me lay out the um, the GUI because the GUI has to reshuffle if you have it vertically aligned or if you have it horizontally aligned or anything in between. And I think that's coming along fairly well. I think I see how that is actually going to work with the uh, I'm probably going to have to draw some divider lines among the sections, but I think I have a way of thinking it out so that if you don't have the console, like the control surface like this, I can present a GUI with all those knobs and things 
some of those things will be able to outdo the console. The reason that the uh, threshold line here has a, a dot, which is not a uh, color, but is instead black slash red is because that's going to be an LED blinky light. And the compressor will light up based on how much compression is in play. And the gate will light up based on whether it's actively gating or not. And so that is a kind of visual feedback I've never done. But the prototypes of it are actually working on my machine. I'm actually working with GUIs that will do that. You know I'm working with GUIs because I have a meter out. And Console X will come out and have all of this where if you are resizing the window and reshaping it, not only will it try to adapt its giant number of controls, 36 controls, to whatever size you want it to be and have them still functional, it will also try to adapt them to whatever shape you want them to be and more, but there's more about that later. People have suggested in emails to me, at least one person, and I know this is not an unthinkable thought, that I should charge for console X because it's that big of a deal and there's that much that goes into it. I'm not going to do that, but at some point I might come out with like a deck of cards that I can get printed up. After all, as you see, I am going to a lot of work on all of these. These are basically just prototypes. And even then, I'm going to want to make allowances for people who don't have a budget and still want to do good musical stuff. So what I'm probably going to do is scan all of these in and use them as a reference to make a really fancy highfalutin set in which like I've, I've got that there and then I've got that there and I mistakenly drew X's on various things and had to sort of in some cases I've crossed them out or tried to like I've got one here where I needed to have a uh, gray dot and instead I just colored it in in black so I scraped it back off with an exacto knife and tried to make it work and the X doesn't have a significance there's fumbles and typos and I'm going to try to clean all of those up and come up with printable card sets which I will sell essentially as a fundraiser and those will not be cheap but you'll be able to download all of the individual JPEGs of these and like print them out yourself if you have the capacity to do that so that you also have a DIY access to everything that I do and so no Console X is not going to be for pay. All of my stuff is still supported by Patreon. I've managed to get fairly substantially above minimum wage if you don't count the number of hours that I work. Like, if I worked 80 hours a week, I'd be making over a minimum wage. Uh, I We're not going to go into that. But um, Console X continues to be Patreon supported. And uh, Patreon apart from a very small amount of YouTube revenue, is the only way that I make my living. None of this other stuff that I do, like obviously not this because I made this, but nothing that I mention is actually paying me. I'm not big enough to do that. The people who try to have me endorse them are like weird scam artists and stuff, and they, they smother my uh, email addresses and also try to lend me money. But uh, no, I'm doing fine. I'm able to continue, and I am still working on Console X, much like I worked on the recent release of Meter. I'm starting to put out more stuff that demonstrates how Meter works. I'm getting the usual responses of, wow, this is not as bright as I want. And I'm like, yeah, you're right, it's not. But I'm able to get the sounds that I want using these new tools, and that's why I'm giving them to everybody because I didn't used to be able to do that. I didn't used to be able to make sounds that I wanted on a laptop or whatever, and, and now I can. I think that's pretty cool. So I will get back to it, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.